All right, bet you good? Let's go. All right, y'all know what it is. It's your boy D Starks. Yeah, Starks artist, and you're tuned in to the Just yeah, Different that. Podcast, yeah, sir. where we talk everything faith, life, and culture. We glad y'all back. For real, real talk. We love this. It. It's EP six, something like that. Something like that, yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> it's crazy. We already got six EPs out. It's, it's felt like a lifetime. It's real but talk. Like, <laughs> But nah, what what we what we letting people know about today? What's what's going on? We gonna let y'all know a little more about us, right? It no, was, cause it's crazy. We really went five EPs, and we strangers. We strangers. <laughs> y'all don't know a single thing about us. <laughs> like we even I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I just assumed y'all just knew who we was. Like I we don't just, know what it was. We just stepped on the scene. We were just two random guys talking just to a camera, trying to pour into y'all lives. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because um, we had. Put a poll out on Instagram yep. asking, like, what y'all want to hear from us, like, in future EPs or whatever. And a lot of people had said, yo, yeah. somebody said, like, yo, can y'all do a Q&A? We don't know nothing about y'all. <laughs> we don't know, know who y'all are. We had a couple of comments like that. Right. And talking about, like, um, or discussing our testimonies and how we came to God and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was thinking about it. And it's funny. Jordan texted me. He was like, bro, like, we really strangers to them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't... <laughs> They don't know us at all. And I was like, that's facts. That's crazy. Nah, but look, long overdue. But, yeah. you know, testimony service is open. It is. Testimony service is open. This is a proper introduction. So, no, let's get straight into it, though. Let's get into it. Woo, bang, bang. All right. So, first of all, we got this a lot, this question a lot. But we are brothers. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I saw this, saw that in the comments on TikTok a lot. Yeah, we, yeah, we're brothers. We are brothers. We're related. I'm, I'm the oldest. Yeah. I'm, yeah, okay, let's clear it up. I'm Darren. I'm the oldest. I'm 19. What you mean by that? What you mean? You said it's clear. Why is it clear that you're the oldest? No, I said, let's clear it up. Let's make sure oh, it's the, the scene is straight. Like, oh, I thought you were saying, like, it's clear that I'm the oldest. I was like, what you mean? Like, Bro, I got good. a beard and everything. You good. All right, you uh, good. You good. You good. He, yeah, he's 19. I'm 18. So we're a year apart. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm a sophomore in college right now. I go to I go to Hanover College, which is like this small private school in Indiana. Um, but yeah, so I'm attending there at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I am a freshman. I go to Ivy Tech Community College. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ain't, no, ain't nothing wrong with community college. Ain't, nothing, ain't nothing wrong with it. There's ain't nothing wrong, wrong with, with it at all. <laughs> we in the same boat. You, you going? You know. <laughs> yeah, you go to community college. Um, yeah, so we both live in like New Albany, Indiana, yep. which is like we we always say Louisville, Kentucky, because like nobody knows where our town is. It's just a small town. Like it's a no name, but. Basically, yeah, we, we still going to say Louisville, Kentucky. That's, like, <laughs> the the basic answer we're going to give right, y'all. It's right across the bridge. It's yeah, like it's right. We're right across the bridge. So, it's real New Albany, Indiana. Um, born and raised, lived here our whole yeah. life. For real. Yeah, basically. We missing anything else? Uh, Somebody ask us for our height. For what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why do you need that I'm information? Not let, I'm, not, I'm not letting them know, though, because I'm low-key, like, I'm, I'm not short. Ten. But I'm 5'10". I was going to say 6'5". <laughs> Be ri- I'm actually 6'3". <laughs> You're good. <laughs> For the ladies listening, I'm 6'4 and growing. Nah, nah. But yeah, so we are we are both related. Both, ooh, I can't talk. Both related yep. uh, brothers and live in New Albany, Indiana. Yeah. What else? 1918, what college students. And yeah. So let's get straight into it, though, because y'all asked about, like, the testimonies and stuff. Yeah. So. For, for the people in, how'd you, how'd you come to the Lord? Uh, how'd you yeah. how'd you come to the Lord? You want me to give you like a full rundown? <laughs> <laughs> Get them the story, but a testimony, man. That's okay, testimony okay. Service. So we're gonna start at about freshman year because I feel like it, the time before that, I kind of like I don't know if it's just you or what. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like as I'm getting older, like I forget a lot of like my memories from like younger ages. No, that's facts. That makes sense. So we're gonna but start like, freshman year. Okay, all right. Because I feel like before then, I really didn't have any like encounters with God. Really, uh, um, I guess that's a part of the story though. Like we can start from like the the very beginning, like your upbringing. You know what I mean? Like going to church every Sunday. What it was that like? So go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, so we've uh, actually been going to church since a very young age. Our parents have always been very involved with their faith and in the church. So we've definitely been going to church at, since like the day we were born. Um, yeah, and I actually do remember feeling the presence of God one time. I was like seven or eight. I don't remember exactly. I was like six, seven, or eight, one of those two. But I remember we were at Praise Covenant. I'm not sure if you remember that. But um, I remember I was crying. I don't know if it's just me, but every time I feel the presence of God, it's like I just can't help but cry. It's just such like a comforting like presence and feeling. I just cry every single time. So I was crying, and they were telling me to say, Jesus, 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 and I keep repeating it because they were talking about how they thought I was going to get the gift of tongues. 
at the time I know what they were talking about. I was like, no, I'm telling you, I'm like six or seven. I have no idea what they're talking about. They're like, you're gonna get the gift of tongues. Keep saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. So I was saying, <laughs> and I was crying too. So I'm like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. So I was doing it. Uh, firstly, I never, I never uh, started speaking in tongues, but I remember that very vividly when I was like seven or eight. And then, <laughs> so yeah, we uh, we've been to going to church our whole lives. So oh wait, and dang, it's low key gonna be disorganized. We'll we'll try to keep it organized as possible. But somebody that? asked like if we had like we we're a part of like a particular domination or anything like that. Oh, which we're not. No. Like we go to All Nations Louisville. Yep. All Nations Worship Assembly Louisville. Um, that's our home church. Our pastor, his name is Josh Hart. Shout out Josh. Shout out Josh pastor Hart. Josh. Pastor Josh Hart. Um, and yeah, but it's a non-denominational church. Yeah. Um, we just simply believe in all 66 books of the Bible. But go ahead. Go Simple ahead. as that. But yeah. Uh, so back to my story. So from that gap from like eight to freshman year, um, I felt like for me personally, to fill that void inside myself, well, basically, let me start off by saying this. No one ever told me that God was more than just going to church every Sunday. Mm. So when I encountered him that one time, I thought, like, that I didn't think anything time of it. you could do it. Yeah, that's what I thought. So no one had ever went into depth about teaching me about how God was deeper than that, how it was a relationship. And mm. so I just, just went on living my life, right? <laughs> going to church every week, just living, trying to fit in. Um, for me, trying to fill that void was with girls. I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. I was that guy. I was a player. <laughs> he was uh, a DM, you know? <laughs> trying to slide I, let me I'm tell gonna be you honest with y'all that's what i did to try to fill that void inside of me you know some people use you know video games yeah. drugs other you know whatever they use but i tried to use girls and freshman year i just got out of a really long relationship and i remember feeling like so depressed for like a couple months mm. and i remember thinking like there has to be more did to break life your heart i you could yeah she did so, go ahead <laughs> something like that something like that but uh yeah, I remember feeling very depressed for like a couple of months after that. And I remember just thinking like there has to be more to life than this. I feel like I was just waking up every day and those couple of months just felt like one continuous day. It was the same thing every mm-hmm. single day. That's just the mindset I was in. I remember thinking like there has to be more than this. Right. Like this is miserable. No way I'm going to live the rest of my life like this. So and actually so freshman that was freshman year basically. That sums up my whole freshman year. And then that summer is when we started going to All Nations. Right. That's when we moved church to All Nations Louisville, the church we're at now. And um, I don't know if you remember this, but it was one of the first times we were visiting. And we were it was during service. And I remember feeling that familiar presence, bro. I started breaking down crying in the middle of the service. But the funny thing was, like, it wasn't during, like, the, typic- the typical time, like, at altar call. It was in the middle of the sermon. No one else was, like, doing anything. I was just crying. He was talking. I was bawling. And, um... Cause I just felt that familiar feeling again. And then, um, just throughout the process of going to that church, I started learning more from my pastor about like the kingdom of God and the, how it works and stuff. And that's when I really started digging into God, like, Oh, there's more to this Mm -hmm. than just going to church every week. Right. And that's when I started becoming exposed to different knowledge and new wisdom. Um, and that's really what the catalyst for that whole process. Um, and it was different from before. Like I said, I try to use girls to fill that void with, with that. It was like, it was the puzzle piece. It didn't necessarily fit, but I was trying to twist it around each and every way to try to fit it fit it into the piece. But with God, it was like that was the missing piece. It fit perfectly. I didn't have to try to twist it around. I didn't have to try to push it in there. It Perfect. p- perfectly was placed there it perfectly. The and that's when I knew, like, this is it. Like, this is what I've been missing. That was that feeling. There has to be more than this. This is what that is. That's so, what I was longing for. That's, that's, that's powerful, bro. I yeah. don't think I've actually really, like... Had heard you explain that before. That's really that's that's powerful. For yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I guess I'll go next. So basically, we kind of have like a similar story. Really, we kind of actually. It's funny. Really, I say like gave our lives to God and came into like our faith kind of at the same time. Really, because yeah. it was when we transitioned churches when it both happened for us. So I'd say like similarly, like as I grew up, you know, elementary, middle school, our yeah. parents, like you said, were very involved ministers. It was one of those things to where like, if we were under this house, you were going to church every Sunday. Yeah. Right. And so it was like, I believed in God, but I didn't know why. Ooh. I was a Christian, but my belief had no. Exactly. Substance behind yeah, it. It had yeah. it had nothing 
to hang it on. It was yeah. just something that I said, something I felt like I was obligated to. Yeah, yeah. Obligated That's a good word, say. obligation. That's yeah. what it felt like. And so I, I never really knew why I believed it was just something that I said. And so, yeah, you know, time goes on. That was basically really my, my testimony for the, for the most part. And then something changed sophomore year. That's crazy, bro. Why does it always start with a girl? It always, <laughs> it always got to start, always with, a start with a relationship. <laughs> Man, go listen to EP3. <laughs> go right now. Extra this one. I'm giving you permission. Come back. Oh, they was cute. They couldn't pray, though. You feel no, me? She but could anyways, not pray. Um, she couldn't pray for not even 30 <laughs> seconds, bro. Chill, chill. I'll just chill on it. Chill. All right. Um, but no, yeah, so I was kind of had got out, like, out of, like, kind of like a shaky relationship my sophomore year. But I'm honestly bigger than that. My identity was tied to basketball. Ooh. I played sports my entire life, and basketball was a That's big good. part of like who I was, yeah. and like what I saw in my future. So during that time, my sophomore year, basketball became my idol. Ooh. You talk about the missing piece. That was the thing that fulfilled me. Yeah, that was the thing that completed me. Like I said, that, every, everyone uses different things. To yeah, sports, and that, that was yeah. that was the like the what what I used to feed my esteem mm -hmm. and who I was. Yeah, and so during that time, it was like that that relationship with basketball became rocky because I was I was putting everything I was in the hands of a game. Of a of a coaching staff, of, yep. of, of fans, yep. of of student sections, of criticism of those around me, and so that all fell apart. Yeah, it all fell apart. And I think, honestly, I'm glad it it was all part of playing because I feel as if I think people, I feel like you've heard it before, but anything you exalt above God, He has to tear down. I've heard, yeah, He I've heard it He has to anything you put a, above Him. It 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 has to go. It has to. It'll never work. Yes. And so I think yeah. that's really what happened. Basketball was my idol, and that it broke me. Like that season was just like really bad, like bad for me. And at the time, like like I said, that was my everything. So I felt like I was like like you said, the next few months after like that season and the latter part of my sophomore year was just like one big day. Really, I really don't remember much. I was that's literally all. going through the motions, exactly, simply bro. existing, yeah. like. I was like, w like, what is my meaning? What is like my purpose? What I'm really meant to do? Like, yep. what's going on? Like, what's next? So I just, I really felt this void. And so during that time, as Jordan mentioned, we had transitioned to a new church. Yep. And so I remember we had this conference and this was the summer. So I had basketball ended. I went through the summer kind of feeling, like I said, going through the motions, uh, a big void. And in August, they had this conference for the youth. And we had gone to the church for about two or three months. Yeah. I was getting more into my faith at that time, but pretty more in, like engaged and stuff. But that conference, for whatever reason, did it. Like, I felt something in my spirit that, like, this was going to be it. Like, mm. this conference is going to be the moment. And so yeah. I remember, I, I ever remember, I don't know why, y'all, but two weeks before then, praying, like, God, like, I know that you're real it was, it was one of those like like i have faith i have belief but like help my unbelief yeah. basically help my unbelief like i'm going through the motions i don't want to feel this anymore exactly. i don't want to carry this weight exactly like i need you to take it i remember praying that like two weeks before the conference like i don't know what you have to do but i need you to show up yeah mm. you That's have good. to it's powerful um, so I remember I prayed that and I literally didn't pray again for the next two weeks. I just kind of like live life. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I remember the conference came and I came in with so much expectation, mm. so much expectation because I believed God was going to do something. I didn't know why. That's so good. Cause he moves on that expectation though. Mm. He will always move on the expectation. If you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Simple as that. He will. And yeah. so, like, that's what that was. I came with so much expectation that he was going to move and do something radical. I didn't know yeah. what it was going to be. And that was the first time that I actually, like, participated, like, in worship and was engaged and wanted him to move in my life. Yeah. Um, I'll never forget it, bro. Like, August 4th, 2018, um, like you said, I felt the presence of God was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that I had, like, that tangible moment of, like, his presence and that that was the moment I realized, like, yo, like, he's real. Yeah. Like, that. it, it was that, one of those moments no one moment. can take away from you. Like, no one moment. can tell me, like, no one can tell me that he's mm. not real. Not after that. Mm. That you don't get that, that type of experience yo. from anywhere else. Yo. And so he sh he showed up um, and wrecked my life. 
uh, and I, I've never been the same since. So ever since that conference, um, yeah, life changed for me. I had like that. I knew why I believed. Mm. I found my why. I found the why. I found my why. Yeah. Um, and like you said, it was a puzzle piece that fit and put everything into place for me. Exactly. Um, and that's, nothing was the same on my Drake. <laughs> so, on that jersey tip. <laughs> nothing was the same. But so, yeah, like I would say like after that moment, it's really when I started walking with God. Yeah. I, I believed and I was at that point doing life with him as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's really, that's really kind of yeah. how And it's it crazy. You were talking about how um, our process has sort of started at the same time, essentially. But I don't know if you realize this, but like, you were like, and even till this day, but you were a really big role model, especially at first, because it was like, I saw you really walking with God, like you were saying, mm. and I felt like I was becoming more established, but I wasn't like all in mm. yet. And when I, I saw you going all in, you were reading every day, like, bro, I saw you in the, in the room reading every day, praying every day. Then I was like, yeah, you were sort of like that, that role model for me. I was like, oh yeah, I got to get on my stuff. And that's when I started reading every day, praying every day. I was like really diving in. So yeah that's crazy bro because i i felt that you you were that for me whenever i was like falling away from god mm. i that's, love you bro yeah, that's, that's 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 crazy. Like, no seriously that's like crazy. i feel like and one of the questions is how do you deal with backsliding as a christian but i remember like at some some point in my walk i lost my fire mm. but you were you were still committed mm. you were still going mm. and so seeing you what in in the living room in the dining room praying and with your bible open that held me more accountable mm. that kept me going and like yo like it's time to pick this up like yeah. you know we really s- holding each other accountable without we, even knowing no it is no, it. <laughs> iron shop is iron bro always bro but also how would you say because one of the questions um that they asked is how would you say your life had changed after so yeah how much did your life change after like you really started living for god like what did that look like um if someone asked me why i woke up every morning i would have an answer for them Mm. that that's my that's essentially my answer to that question prior to that if someone had asked me that question i would simply not have an answer that's so good but with like when i started walking with god every day i woke up you on purpose i had a purpose on purpose i'm gonna start tearing up <laughs> Woo, my bro i felt that you're living on purpose yes it was like i don't know how to explain it it was like i i just had a reason i had a why it felt like every single day there was a new purpose to tackle so a new new something i got you know what i'm saying um you had, yeah. life had meaning i had something Again, to live for or for the first for. time yeah really and it wasn't something that was just temporary. Mm, no, not at all. That's but yeah, that's that's what my life looked like. I felt like I woke up every day and I had more initiative. Mm-hmm. I felt like um, I I, I want to be a light. It wasn't like I need to. It was like it was like I wanted to. You, you know, had the desire for it. Yeah, yeah, I had the desire for it. It wasn't like I had to force myself to do it. It's like I woke up today. I was like, I want to put a smile on someone's face. Facts and. I, and Ooh, because that's what happens, bro. It pours out of you. Mm. <laughs> it comes out. And I, I would say the same thing. I felt when I came into Christ, honestly, like I would say like the first three months afterwards, I well specifically like I was so much more bolder in my faith. 100%. I was, I was, I was extremely bold in my faith and it was something I was completely unashamed about because yeah. it was like, God, you i owe you everything everything <laughs> i i owe you everything 100 it was like and so there was ooh. no words there was no criticism there was no gossip there was no chatter that could push me from at, <laughs> at all the thing that brought me out <laughs> at all <laughs> at Cause, all because you just think of that image like pff, you pulled me out of that place i don't care what they have to say i don't i don't care you pulled me out of this my life is yours. It's yours completely. <laughs> my my life isn't what they say it is. My life isn't what they think. My life is yours. Bro. I don't. That's <laughs> yeah, fine. So yeah, I definitely say that after I got. Uh, oh, what the heck? Um, yeah, after I got saved and really started walking with God, that was the biggest difference. Like my boldness and my faith, and like yeah. you said, like my desires began yeah. to change. I know we mentioned it 
I think in the other EP or before, but like, you know, his desires became mine. Yeah, exactly. And that that was the crazy part. And I lost the taste for the things that used to fulfill me. Mm hmm. I lost I lost the 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 desire and the I don't know like this longing to be a part of the things that I used to like you know long for. Mm. And so that was a big that was the biggest thing for me. And so how would you say your mind changed and habits cuz that was another question. So how much did your mind change habits and what did God do for you after? Um how much did my mind and my habits change? Mm -hmm. Um I felt like, especially like after after that feeling, you said that you got that that feeling that's like, I know God is real. Like, and no one can take that from you. After that moment, I felt like I had more of an initiative and more of like a, you know, initiative to do what I needed to do, right? And I felt like I needed to capitalize on that. Mm. So, wait, what was the question again? I totally <laughs> How like, did your mind change and your habits? <laughs> Okay, uh, my habits. Uh, like I said, okay, so I'm trying to put it into words that make sense. Your my, when you grow closer to God, your desire, His desires become yours, but you still have to walk it out. Mm -hmm. It's not just like a one and done. Like, oh, His desires are mine now. I won't feel any pull from anything else. That's good. That's not how it works. That's good. You're still gonna be tempted. Mm -hmm. You're still gonna here and there want to do certain things and go back to the way things were but that part, um that part you have to put god on his throne because i think um even after that moment that i was saved i still had other idols in my life <sighs> anything that you put before god is an idol anything that you're giving more time and energy to more Any, than god is an idol anything you take your pain to is an idol Anything can be an idol. I don't think people realize that. It's not because what I thought is the idol is like, oh, I'm worshiping to a statue. No, an idol can be the television. The idol could be your phone. The idol can be a friend. I, we posted this other day, but if social media is the idol, my time is a burnt offering. Anything can be an idol. So I think what I had to do is put God on the throne. No more idols. I had to put away all the idols. And once I did that, that's when that process really started of my mind changing. Like, so like, to answer that question, that's how I changed mm -hmm. my mind. I had to be deliberate about it. Yeah, a lot of it was God giving me his desires, but I still had to take that step. God's not going to ever take the step for you. It's your, you got to move, you know what I mean? He'll that's, guide you, he'll direct you, but you got to take those steps at the same time. So. That's fine. That's really good. No, and I say for me what that looked like is I remember – um, after I got saved, unintentionally, I went on a fast, mm -hmm. not, not a, uh, not like the typical fast in terms of like no food or water, but I went on a, like a social media fast. Yeah. Cause I found myself after I had that moment with God, mm -hmm. like a week later, them temptations were still creeping back. Mm -hmm. I was still going back to yeah, it. So I was like, of, yeah. I, no, I'm not, I'm not, exactly. I refuse. Exactly. And so like unintentionally it was like, okay, like I want to remove every barrier that is, mm, I want to remove every barrier that is disrupting my intimacy with God. Mm. And so at that time, it was like, I want to give all my time, my focus and energy to him. Mm. And so what I did was like, I deleted my social media, y'all. And I mean like, not the app. I deleted my accounts. Ooh. Like I was a ghost, <laughs> y'all. Yeah. I, and it, it was like, it wasn't like I just wanted to go off the grid or anything, but it was genuinely like, God, you have my life mm. and I won't, I won't let anything yeah. disrupt this. I will not. And so that, that's what it looked like for me. Like it was really like a strong, like discipline. So I started with yeah. like that, you know, kind of like that fast of like detoxing myself mm. from like just always being on like media and hear what yeah. every, everyone else had to say and tapping in to what he was saying. That's good. That's good. Removing what everyone else had to say and tapping in to what God was saying. And so that that's what it looked like for me in terms of changing my mind was like, what we talked about, we talked about it before, but taking like just practical steps every day yeah. to getting in my word and letting, you know, his word shape my world. Letting his world, his, excuse me, letting his word shape my world letting his words become my foundation so i was coming and now wanting to yeah. approach life through a kingdom perspective yeah everyone approaches and sees life through different lenses yeah 
And you have the ability to choose which lens you're going to see it through. Some people see it through a Democratic lens, a Republican lens, a conservative lens, a, a liberal lens, a uh, I, your own personal lens, your own personal preferences, yeah. desires, through your, uh, through the lens of your flesh and what you want to do. But you have to step into or get to the point to where the lens and perspective you're looking at life at is through the word yeah. and what he's saying. Yep. And so you had to answer that question. Like That's kind of how my mind changed. It was yeah. like kind of like... Through that, through that fast, like indirectly, I really didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, um, sort of. Just, it was, yeah, it was just like a byproduct yeah. of like my yes, really. Um, and so yeah, but then like letting, like I said, his word shape yeah. my world, and that's how my habits start to change because I was living according to him and not my own desire to what the world was trying to tell me. Yeah. So that's that's really what that looked like. We offer uh, no resistance. Yes. So this was a this is a really good question. Y'all really y'all went off. I appreciate y'all. These are really good questions. Uh, so the next question was, um, how do you? Well, no. What advice would you give to new Christians? So mm. people who you know are just stepping and giving that yes to God, like yo. Hmm. You gonna go first? You wanna take it first? Because mm. I. <laughs> Because <laughs> I have something, I feel like I have I had an answer right away, but it's like I'm kind of like finding the words. Yeah, so I, I would say like, man, this is there's so much. But I would say like one of the biggest things is that you you get saved at the altar, but there's still work to do. That's crazy. Because I was thinking that, no, no, but you, you put it into the perfect word. Deliverance may happen at the altar, That's but so discipline good. must take place at home. That's so good. Deliverance may happen at the altar, but discipline must take place at home. And so whenever you do come to God, your spirit's saved, but your desires don't magically disappear. Yep, yep. And so I think that we have this misconception, and I did, yeah. coming to God that, oh, snap, I'm saved. Now, no temptation will try to, you know like ensnare me yeah. to come back to the life right. that I was. But the crazy thing is it probably comes stronger when it, you start living for God. It does. It does. And so that's, a, I guess, advice, not even, I guess that would be advice or like just like a nugget and like perspective is that there's still work that needs to be done. Yeah. You have to work out your soul salvation. salvation. Mm. We mentioned this before, but I, I got to reiterate because it's so important. Like God wants your soul. He he wants your soul. Your spirit is already saved. Yeah, that's done. So so your soul is what's at stake. That's why it says in the Bible, "He who wins souls is wise, not he who wins spirits." Your spirit saved in an instant. So the battle's over your soul. It's a God soul. wants your mind, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Yep. Like it's. That's it, good. It, you know what I mean? So the discipline takes takes place at mm. deliverance may happen at the altar, but dis discipline must take place at home. So there's still steps that need to be that need you have to take after you leave the four walls. Yeah. To get closer to him. And I say I would say another thing along those lines is that I think I put it down, but basically in terms of like walking out your faith, it's practical and execution but spiritual in nature. Does that make sense? It does. It's practical and execution, but yeah. spiritual in nature. So don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. When you're walking, you're exactly. coming into Christ, it's like, we we mentioned in other piece, EPs, but like, it's really, it's a relationship. So staying in communication, praying, That's reading, good advice. reading your word, surrounding yourself with the right people. It's not, anything that's like rocket science exactly right we try to make it so complicated people have like this anxiety and this fear of like am i doing it right like there's a right way to do it <laughs> <laughs> which there's not you know what i mean so like yeah, yeah. i would say don't overcomplicate it exactly. like that's genuinely that's make god your best friend uh, make him incorporate him into your life and make him lord that's good so those are, I, those are a few things that i kind of i had and i said what advice would i give to a new believer um I would say nobody is exempt from pain and suffering. Mm. Once you are born into this world, that is inevitable. That is something that you will always experience. That oh, people think that like when you come to God, all your problems will go away, and it's a common misconception. The rain falls on the righteous. Oh, that 
and the unrighteous. They don't like that gospel. They don't like it. It says that in the same Bible we're reading. They don't like that gospel. It says it. The it says rain it. falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. I'm so glad you brought that scripture. I kind of forgot about that, Jim. That's good. So it's it's not if the rain will come. It's your response to it and exactly. who you have walking you through the storm. Ooh. It's about your <laughs> response to it and ultimately who you have walking you through the storm. That's what it's about. That's what makes the difference. The rain's there, but God's with me. It will always be there. Yeah, so um, that's good. Um, yeah, so that's that's my advice for new believers. Because uh, I think it's a common misconception and a lot of people walk away from God in the church because they think that, oh, when I come to God, all my problems are going to be solved. And then they get hit with they get hit with that family death. They get hit with that that car wreck. What what is happening? They they're getting hit with all the stuff, and they're like, "You talking, bro?" And they're like, "Oh, I thought this thing. I thought all my problems would go away." It's like, no, that's not what it is. The rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. Ooh, but you're just ugh, I'm, I'm dropping into it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, and we're, we're and we're not saying that like you come to Christ and your life's just not gonna be good no, at all. No, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's but saying, like that's these struggles and these problems will present themselves, but you'll, you'll but you have you'll have peace. You'll have peace them. through it. Yeah, that's what it would, you'll have peace through it. And you'll have like God, like God guiding you, guiding exactly. you, and giving you what you need to overcome these battles exactly. that do present that that will present themselves at some point. That's right? what's different. It's it's just like the walk without God. You're just walking alone, going through all these issues. No no security. No, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I can't think of it. But it's like with God, it's like he's He's with you. Mm-hmm. He's guiding you through it. He's giving you peace through it. He's giving you strength through it. And life with him is better than life without. Exactly. So, yeah, like the problems won't necessarily like cease. They won't cease. That's what, that's our point. That I'm not saying like you have necessarily more problems at all, but like they will like at some point present themselves. Yeah, it's like the, the problems and issues don't change, but you do. That, that's what it is. Mm. And who? Ooh, that's good. That's that's really good. That's fire. Um. Nah, yeah. So I, I, I think that's that's it. We covered. Well, not, it. well not for us. Like, uh, there's not more questions. Mine uh, talk for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we already had 32 minutes. Um. But no, yeah. So I guess we can talk a little bit about just different now. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, this kind of goes along with the testimony. So we. We, um, like I said, kind of like really both started walking it out at the same time. Yeah. We come to All Nations Wor- All Nations Worship Assembly Louisville, which is our church and still currently is. Um, and our youth pastors give us this idea. They're like, yo, y'all should start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so like for some of y'all, because we got some new, you know, I mean, people that just jumped yeah. on the train. But we've been doing Just Different for a minute. We have like the Whoa, three years. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> no, three we, years. Bro, we've had these bracelets for a long time. Yeah, low key. Yeah, yeah. we got bracelets. Um, so, yeah, our, our youth pastors came to us like, yo, y'all should really start a YouTube channel. We think it'd be dope. And we were like, we kind of like all in, really. At that yeah. point, it was like, we just want to, two kids want to spread the gospel. Yeah, that's that's all it was. And so we started a YouTube channel, um, I want to say 2018, 2019, probably. Sounds, yeah, something, um, something. And so we did that for a while. But it was... It was more like, I guess, a hobby. Like, we were kind of, like, just inconsistent yeah, very with inconsistent it and all that good stuff. Um, but it's something that we still are passionate about and that we did. Um, and we sold, we had merch. We sold shirts yeah. at the time. Like We we, sold, we actually had two shirts that we we uh, put out and sold. Um, like, obviously, we had, like, the bracelets and things like yeah. that. So it was a great experience. And I think that, like, we really had a lot of impact, like, yeah. while we were in high school, with, yeah. while, we, while we did it. Um, so that's kind of, like, how just different was born like it was literally our youth pastors coming to us and we like the next week we sat down we got the logo together yep. like the mission statement how we wanted to do it the shirts and yeah just kind of like went from there went all in yeah so i think we did that for like a year 2019 and like 2020 we kind of just off that the was grid. like our backslide year bro i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> off we, the grid yeah we just we just kind of stayed stagnant we just kind of like you know, not really walking in purpose at that time. So it kind of t- took the back burner that everything. Yeah. Um, then 2021 rolls around, and I just had, like, this feeling in me that, like, yo, it's time. Mm. I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know if y'all can relate to it. I know some of y'all can, but there was something in my spirit telling me, yo, D, purpose is calling. Yeah. 
future is calling. Exactly. It's now. Stop. You don't have more time. You don't. You don't have more time. And so you can't afford to waste anymore. Not at all. And so that drove me to a lot of action. And then we started getting, we were just like sat down like, yo, like we should do a podcast. Yeah. Like it would be a lot. We were already doing that. Like just talking to a camera. Yeah. Like, Let's just make, make the podcast happen. And yeah, we really just like doing what God told us. Like we had words, I know spoken over my life specifically, just saying like the manifestation of like what's happening right now mm-hmm. with it. And so I knew it was something that God was calling us to do. Yeah. So yeah, in June, we got all the like supplies and everything, the equipment. And, you know, July, we kind of like started planning a bit more. And August, it's like, yo, we, we're getting to it. Yeah. We no, no, no more like putting it off, procrastinating. Hey. <laughs> like we're going to actually step into it. And so, yeah, like, that's kind of like how it really started. This difference been kind of going for a while now. Yes, with the podcast yes. is like just new, just like an extension of what we've already been doing. And so that's really kind of how it all started was like, you know, with our youth pastors mm-hmm. like three years ago. Exactly. Yeah. I remember when we um, when you had got the mics and everything and we couldn't figure out how this works. And we pushed it off for like three <laughs> weeks. Yeah, I got the I got the mics and all the equipment. We didn't know how to use any of it. <laughs> No, when I say, like, we waited, like, three we weeks, did. like, two, three weeks, so we just didn't know how to make it work. Because I'll be honest with you, the my mom said at the time, I was like, I'm not even trying to fool with it, bro. I was like, it, <laughs> it was just like, what's going on? It, it was crazy. Yeah, but I'm glad we finally, like, started it, bro. No, yeah, for real. And so I guess, yeah. Do I, it anyway. Do it. I'm telling y'all, like, we don't get on here or we post anything that we're not living or God yeah. hasn't told us. It was like, a when do I it say, anyway. Yes, like when we say it, we mean it because we're like living testaments to that. Yeah. I say do it anyway. The how is up to him. Yeah. It's it's up to him. Like everything that's happening right now, like even you right now listening really? to us, like that's, that's by God's design. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how it's gotten to this point, but we're just going to keep doing what he told us. Yeah. I was telling Jordan this, and I, I guess this is the part where we'll leave y'all with, but this is my season of... It, one of the questions was, when did y'all take that step into giving God your complete yes? Mm. And I feel like right now I'm in that season of giving him my yes again. Ooh. Completely. And I told Jordan this before the pod, <laughs> before the EP. And I said, this is my season of God. We offer no resistance. Ooh. I. I offer no resistance to your will, to your plan, to what you want to do with me. God, you have my yes. Every morning, Mm. every morning that this is my season of God, you have my yes. Whatever you want to do, let it be done. I know for a little bit there, I took the yes back, but but take my yes again. Mm. (laughs) Take my yes again. Take it again. Take me to the king. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that, that song came to my mind. But no, yeah, to answer that question, that's when I, I think right now I'm really back in that mode of giving him my complete yes again. Yep. Same um, here. So, yeah. So, I, 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 I definitely say that. Yeah. Um, Let me see. I think we, we really hit. Yeah. We hit some good stuff. Not for real. We, we hit most of it. We can be honestly be talking for an hour, but I'm going yeah, I'm 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 to like, like, hey, cut y'all loose. This is a little too long for me anyway. We could keep going, for real. No, yeah, so we, we got more coming. But, yep. yeah, do, do we give them everything? Uh, I feel like we kind of gave them a good look. We like, gave them, yeah. Kind of like who yeah, we Y'all are. feel like y'all know us a little more. I hope so, but we <laughs> were strangers, so I hope this is a <laughs> little step in the door. Um, But, no, yeah. You gonna tell me your relationship status? Why? <laughs> Why you got coming out like that? Married. But no, like, I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm married. Married to the yes. Whew. I'm all in on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my relationship is. status. That's what it is. Purpose. My purpose is calling. Yep. I had to pick up the phone. Hat. Ooh. I had to pick up. I had to it pick was up calling. I had to answer. <laughs> had to. What's your relationship status? <laughs> you good? <laughs> good? I'm married to the yes. Oh yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. No, sounds like good. Real talk, sounds good. Sounds good. No, no, sounds no, no real good. talk. I'm big. Hey, hey, you good? You good? You bro, good, I'm good, not. Good. I'm single. Bro. Don't don't even don't even cap on the pot. We ain't got. <laughs> we ain't, we ain't even gotta do that. I am at single. All. We ain't get that at all. But no, yeah. <laughs> what what you gotta leave the people with? What you gotta leave people with? Um. What you got to leave the people with? 
God's grace is enough. That's for you. So, no, so no real talk. Someone, someone listening needed to hear that. That's fine. God's grace is enough. I don't know. I just feel like I need to say that. His grace is enough. And I'll say this. Give him the yes. Stop running. You don't have more time. You don't. You know, this is testimony service. And let this, like, this is, let this be yours. Like, right now, this was a day. This was a week. This Wait. was a month that I said. you That you said, God, I offer no resistance. I offer no resistance. Make this a day. I offer no resistance. Not tomorrow. Yes to your will, your way. Not a month right from now. now. Not a week from now. Right now. Right now. That's your work. Take it. And receive it. But hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> Say, man. We appreciate y'all again. Thank you for tuning into Justin for Podcast. Stay, stay you. you. Stay real. Stay, stay humble. humble. We'll catch y'all next week. Yeah. Much love. Much love. Much love. <laughs>